Welcome to session 18, where we are talking about module 16, the injunction to study people. An alternative topic title is why won't people buy my stuff? Many artists sell passively. Last summer, I was in a tourist town and saw an artist selling at this open market. Sitting and waiting for customers is one strategy. My suggestion is to learn what people need and sell that instead. Exceptionally creative people can look at a situation or market and see what is missing. They have a special gift of sight. They can cut through fog and noise. They can see what is meaningful to a group of people. If you want to sell your art, learn to do this. You can gain insight into customers through different methods. Big data is one method. Data miners plow through vast amounts of data and discover connections that no one else sees. But mining of big data is only one method. And it doesn't provide meaning in the way that qualitative learning does. Another option is a research method called ethnography. Ethnography means writing about culture or about ways of thinking. It helps you to understand customs and ways of thinking of a group of people. I created a university course to help business students become ethnographers a few years ago. I did so because I believe it is crucial to helping creators sell their art. Ethnography helps you figure out needs before you start creating. Ethnography can be a way of selling your creativity by discovering what people will buy. The purpose is to study be human behavior. Ethnographers can find patterns, connect dots, discover what people don't know about themselves. Through ethnography, you can discover new perspectives then develop your own perspective. It will make you wiser. Jane Goodall was an ethnographer. She lived in a chimpanzee community and actually sat with the chimps all day and watched them. She compiled her observations into data and then synthesized that so that we now have knowledge on chimpanzee social and family life, which gives us insight into human social and family life. In the same way, you can learn a, more about a group of people and discover their needs and wants. Choose a group of people, uh, your potential buyers, could be investment bankers, uh, professional drone pilots, single soccer moms in Florida, could be affluent retired travelers, it could be video gamers in Argentina, all of these groups have particular needs, but they themselves don't understand their own needs. To sell to the group, you must find them, understand their needs and buying patterns. To understand buyers, you need to leave home. People are liars. Margaret Mead, who helped develop the field of ethnography, famously said, what people say, what people do, and what they say they do are entirely different things. People say, I mostly use educational apps on my phone. What they really do is they watch videos of cats. Why do we lie? Not because we're bad, but because we don't understand ourselves. What we see and feel becomes invisible to us so we don't know what we want. That means people are liars, so we can't learn everything by simply asking about their feelings. We need to watch them and indirectly question them. Steve Jobs said, it's really hard to design products by focus groups. A lot of times people don't know what they want until you show it to them. So watch people in their natural habitat. Watch the relationships between customers and their environment. Observe behavior patterns. Discover things that are not obvious. In the end, you, you understand their worldview better. Stephen Wilcox says, watching people provides valuable information. If you must talk, he suggests asking people questions while they use your product. It gives a context for the questions. It helps them to be more descriptive about how they feel. Here are some research ideas. If your field is in is the culinary arts, observe meal preparation. If you wonder why people won't buy your stuff, go to a store, watch them shop. 
if your field is filmmaking, go to a theater ticket booth. Watch how people decide which films to watch. More ideas. Uh, one, ask people for feedback about your industry. Being vague helps them to be more honest. Uh, watch people interact with your employees. View the artifacts of a group. If you want to sell artisan coffee, sit in a coffee, coffee shop for a few hours. Ideally, sit in a coffee shop for one hour at a time, five different times of the day, when it opens, during rush hour, at noon, in the afternoon, and at, in the evening, because that gives you a different set of data points. Do you want to write and sell children's books? Spend 12 hours watching people in the children's section of a bookstore. Want to design farm buildings that are superior to conventional barns? Spend time watching farmers use their storage facilities. Want to sell food? Go to farmer's markets. Watch how people interact with real food. Try to stay detached. Try to stay invisible. However, your involvement can actually range from being very covert to simply detached to being an actual participant with the, particip with the participants in your study. I usually recommend a four-step process to my students. First, determine the customer group. Who? Number two, decide where to find the potential customers. Where? Number three, watch them interact with the product. What? And record what you see. And number four, analyze what you saw. Why? For that, find that fourth step, analyze what you saw. Write up what you saw and heard. Don't generalize. Consider everyone's individual experiences. What things were common among people you watched? What surprised you? Create recommendations. How should you change your product? Should you distribute differently? Try the AEIOU activity developed by Heidi Neck at Babson. The method is kind of simplified in the next pages table. In a buying environment, observe what are people doing? You look at the activities, what are people doing? Look at the environment. Does the environment do anything? How are people using the environment? Look at interactions, any interactions between people, between people and objects. Look at the objects themselves. What other things do you see? How do people use them? And then look at the users. Who are the users? What do they do? Are there any extreme users? If you do it well, you can find patterns, connect dots, and discover needs that customers didn't know they had. So meet me back here tomorrow. Got some more stuff to go over.